Hello, everybody. It's uh, Jeff Gibby over at Metastack. I hope you're doing well. I want to welcome you to the last online trader summit of this year. Uh, we're going to have a great day. I hope you're having um, your coffee and all that kind of stuff. So um, in any case, let's go ahead and get underway. Um, welcome. Um, Welcome to the class today. So today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So we get that out of the way. I wanna make sure that I am sharing my screen. So that looks like it's coming through okay. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is after welcoming you, thank you for coming today. Uh, I hope you enjoy the class. This is uh, my favorite Saturday. Um, I wanna say thank you to our sponsor, Stocks and Commodities Magazine. Um, uh, really appreciate the support that they've done. It's a great magazine. Um, they've uh, they've been supporting the Online Trader Summit since we started doing it like five years ago or something. So uh, we want to say thank you for that. You can get a free issue if you didn't sign, opt in for it already. And I'll send you this little bit.ly link in the chat in just a minute. Christine says you can hear me. Thank you. Chris, I'll upgrade you so you can answer big trends related questions in just a second. Uh, one of the things that we'll be talking a lot about today is Metastock. Um, to kind of get on with the show, we've been rated number one in our software 25 years in a row. We're going to be showing you a lot of Metastock charts today. I'm going to be doing about uh, a couple of uh, classes on how it can help you as a trader, trader. But let's go ahead and get started so that we don't run late today. So um, I do want to introduce a good friend of mine, uh, Price Heedley. Price and I have been working for with each other for a number of years. I think it's over a decade now. Um, the thing I like about Price and what I'll say about Price is um, I very much like the philosophy he uses uh, when he's looking at trade. So, you know, he, he starts with the attitude that, hey, I'm going to skip over a lot of the opportunities that are kind of mediocre opportunities and focus on the very best. Um, uh, opportunities that exist in the market and it's kind of a, uh, a strategy that he's used for a number of years. Um, I love it, you know, as an option trader you have 6,000 options. Uh, when we started working with Price he was uh, rated many times the top, uh, one of the top markets uh, timers by Timers Digest. He's in the Traders Hall of Fame. Uh, I can't say enough good things about him so we're gonna go ahead and bring him on. I'm gonna get out of the way. Uh, Price, let's go ahead and bring you in here. I'm going to turn over the controls to you. Thank you, Jeff. Always a pleasure to be with you and all the Metastock team and uh, everybody today. Glad you're uh, with us as we kick things off. I know we've got a great, let me make sure I share the right screen here. Um, we've got a great uh, lineup of speakers, so you're going to have a ton of great information coming to you today. Hopefully, I can kick it off uh, with with plenty for you to ponder. Given I've been trading since 1990 uh, when I graduated Duke University, I kind of thought I knew it all and made the classic mistakes when I got started in trading you know you do your analysis you think we all we all know we're brilliant analysts right uh, but the bottom line is that the market sometimes doesn't realize that and I quickly realized that if I'm going to stay in the trading game I've got to get in tune with what the market is doing so it's that old adage of trade what you see not trade what you believe so everything that I focus on here is about chart analysis and Metastock of course it does a fantastic job of tying in everything that I've learned in three decades of trading into our big trends toolkit uh, in Metastock, which Jeff will tell you about later. But I'm going to show you how I implement this with a way that you can make money uh, with low dollar options. This is where basically, even if you have a very small account, you can still take advantage of these opportunities. Uh, as long as, I, I tend to say, as long as you have 400 bucks to invest per trade, uh, which is, isn't much, and, and we're looking to typically turn that into potentially a uh, about a thousand bucks on the on the on the best trades and then still look at doubling that um you know and and make four or five hundred bucks even on trades that don't get to their final objective but knowing that there's trades that we can lose on and we could potentially lose um you know half of that or even all of that so i want i want with that in mind i want to keep you in mind that this is an aggressive strategy i'm teaching you today uh but you can definitely control your dollars at risk so you can make sure that you don't have too much into any one trade 
Uh, and I'll share with you a lot of case studies about what worked, what didn't work today. But just remember that everything we're sharing for, with you here today is for your information and education only. Nothing we talk about here should be considered a specific recommendation of buy or selling a particular investment because I will be showing you up-to-date charts I just captured an hour ago. Um, so basically, you'll see where some key stocks are right now in the market as a whole. But you are 100% responsible for your own investment decisions. Big Trends and the staff are not responsible for any trades you choose to make. Uh, not all Big Trends products and services are appropriate for all types of traders and investors. This is definitely the, the most aggressive strategy that I teach and trade. Uh, but it's one that you can really dramatically grow your portfolio in very short order and then need to know how to manage your risk. I'll talk about that. We don't provide any personalized financial tax or legal advice to any individual. What we do is we take our research on this, what I call my Grand Slam option strategy, and I send out real-time emails and text alerts to our Grand Slam option subscribers. And you'll get a great way that you can take advantage of that and get started at very low risk yourself at the end of the presentation today. Make sure you consult your tax advisor too before you make any investments going to impact your tax situation. It's interesting because the baseball season just ended. You know, the Red Sox won the World Series. Um, you know, it seemed like it kind of flew by, and uh, and and yet this this philosophy of hitting home runs and grand slams is still very, very powerful. In fact, uh, the, if you watch the Red Sox Dodgers at all, you saw that uh, the critical moment came in the, in the fourth game where the bases were loaded and the guy that came up for the Red Sox had hit four grand slams in his history, which means you hit a home run that clears all the bases. You get four runs all at once. He ended up hitting a double uh, to the wall that cleared three of those four, uh, all three of the runners and, and effectively, uh, ice the game in the series for the Red Sox pretty much. So what we're talking about here though is that you know when you start off, we're not playing for singles. We're not playing just to get onto first base. First base is of course over here. Uh but what we're looking at is second base, we call it a double as they call it in baseball terms. And in, in trading terms, you know a double is hundred percent on your money. We're looking to make a hundred percent on the first half of our investment. If I make a hundred percent, I sell half of my investment no matter how much I love the trade that I'm in, when you sell half of your of your investment uh, at a double, you've gotten all your risk capital back in your pocket. You put a thousand bucks into a trade, which is what our model portfolio is based on, uh, that you put maybe 10% of your capital in, say you start with 10,000, you put a thousand in per trade max. That's what we're going to show you some uh, model portfolio examples on. You can, of course, do it with more or less. But bottom line is that when you, when you take a thousand, you turn it into two, you take about half of that 2000 that thousand dollars back in your pocket and all of a sudden now you become much more flexible not just financially but emotionally to keep riding and so when i can get a triple or 200 percent gain i sell half of my remaining half so a quarter of my initial investment here at third base at a triple and then when i hit a quadruple which is a 300 percent gain which we'll call rounding the bases uh four times four different bases you touch that'd be a 300 percent profit i sell the rest why don't I keep riding for potentially a 500 or a thousand percent gain? Every once in a while you'll get those, but I've seen that when you get to that plus 300 percent, a lot of times those trends are pretty extended, and you can go ahead and, and potentially see some reversals pretty quickly too. So we've learned that that you know in a lot of trading over the years that that 300 percent final target is just a sensible way to take off that last piece on those really big home runs and grand slams as we call them. We're going to talk about these option strategies, which are effectively saying, look. One option contract to control 100 shares of stock can be bought for just a buck, or that's in, in trading terms, that's 100 bucks to control 100 shares, a buck or less. We will never pay more than a buck um, on that option price, so never more than $100 a contract. Sometimes we'll pay as little as a half a buck or three quarters of a buck, so you can get in for sometimes 50 or 75 bucks controlling 100 shares of stock like Microsoft, Apple, um, you know, MasterCard, stocks that are triple digit stocks that it costs you 10 grand plus to buy 100 shares of stock, you can control for 100 bucks, yes. Now, you're, this is definitely typically um, using out of the money options, which means it's a more aggressive strategy, so it's important that you get your timing right. Everything I'm sharing with you today is all about timing, is, is not the only thing, it's everything. It's basically, you know, we've got to focus on getting your timing right, and Metastock helps me do that. I'll show you some uh, up-to-date chart examples. We're gonna also talk options, uh, theory and strategy, and there's a term in options that a lot of people don't think about. Most people think about volatility or the time or theta component, uh, volatility, a vega component. These are called the Greeks, but gamma is very important in what we do here with this grand sum option strategy. I'll share with you how gamma works in your favor. And then we're going to share with you not just one indicator, but three key indicators 
the CCI, the, the big trends bands are based on the Williams percent R and, and then the ADX, the average directional movement. So we're going to share with you those three components that go into this aggressive options trading strategy and then how I select when to get in, when to get out and how to manage risk. Now, I hadn't had a chance to update this. I'm going to, I'm going to update you that basically, okay, um, this shows you in the first 17 months we did this strategy through the end of May, we're up over 28 grand on a thousand bucks a trade going in. These are gross profits before commission. So all the gains and losses are in there. And, you know, even if it was a total, every once in a while it could be a total wipeout uh, on a given trade. That's why I say no matter how good it's going, never commit more than 10% of your capital that you allocate for this uh, Grand Slam option service. Now, to be fair, we've given back almost three grand since then, so we're up about twenty five grand now through the end of october so and and this year we're we were up about eighty percent now we're only up about fifty percent for two thousand and eighteen for the portfolio that's only putting ten percent in per trade so I, I I told people, look, we're going to go through some bumps in the summer and maybe even even in the fall. The reason I'm telling you about the strategy now is this is the time you want to be geared up for buying options because November, Dece November, December, and January are typically the best three months of the year. You saw when we look at the market movement here in a second that we had a big rally this past week as people get geared up for that. When we broke it out on a month by month basis, you get a sense of how we're doing those first 17 months. And like I said, uh, you know, we've, we've given back a little bit of ground now that 28 is down to about 25,000 over the last uh year and 10 months so um so essentially saying okay guess what we're only up 150 percent on our portfolio over the last um, just under two years now what are we going to talk about today um you know we're going to talk about examples here here's here's an example with alibaba um and we're going to get into some examples but i get a lot of questions about some of these names like alibaba so i'll just show you quickly a chart and we've got a lot of stuff going on in this chart the top line the green line is what i care about that's the adx the average directional movement uh adx is what we care about there and a lot of people won't trade until adx gets high and that's a mistake based in, in my experience what you usually want to focus on instead is when ADX has been low. It's been not in a not in a strong trend, but actually in a choppy trading range. And then it starts to go to the upside or the downside. Uh, so in this case, like for example, when I see like an ADX cross in green uh, happening, and my percent R there, the Larry Williams percent range indicator, and the CCI are all broken down, like Alibaba was there in early August, then you can find some quick downside opportunities. You saw another one of those happen here the uh, first week of October where you can see the ADX crossing. We're gonna get into what all these mean here. ADX crossing and then it continues below that key um, support about 160 and the stock quickly drops about 135 over the next week. Now, where is it now? Wouldn't mess with it right now because ADX is going down, that green line going down. It's the first lesson off of that chart is you wanna see ADX rising and keep rising, okay? So when ADX starts headed the other direction, it could be a trend reversal. Doesn't mean you should now bet on the upside, uh, of course, there's been a ton of prior support in uh, in Alibaba down just below 170. It's been violated. So it's a fairly broken chart. But the bottom line is that I don't trade the options and buy puts until everything lines up properly. So we're going to walk you through how this all works. But philosophically, when you talk about hitting home runs, you also have to be prepared that you can occasionally get some strikeouts or some you know losses that are going to uh, sting a little more than you know they normally would. And that's why not over committing your capital is so important you know babe ruth when you think about it before i remember watching hank Aaron break babe ruth's record in the 70s when he hit his 715th but for a long time many decades the babe's 714 career home runs lasted as the all-time record but when you go back and look at the stats he also struck out uh, almost twice as much 1330 times and yet he was a six or seven time champion. I didn't count the first year of the Red Sox since he, he basically didn't play the first year he was on the Red Sox. He won two at the Red Sox. Then the infamous trade where he was traded to the Yankees and got four more World Series that way. So he became a, a multiple champion. Um, and he said, look, you know, how does he hit home runs? He swings as hard as he can. He swings with big with everything I've got. He says, I hit big or I miss big. Now, I want to try to limit the miss big part. Uh, and Babe was known for living as big as he could, too. But I, this is a quote I really love, which is over here in the graphic. He says, never let the fear of striking out get in your way. See, what a lot of traders that I talk to, even with the bull market that we've had over the last decade, um, 
a lot of traders are still very gun shy, very skittish. That fear factor is still getting in a lot of traders' way, not allowing you to take advantage of what the market is offering you. And so we're going to walk you through how you can break that fear down and say, okay, trade small and build up. But you also have to know you, you can't even ignore what I call the 800-pound gorilla, uh, and that's the institutions. The institutions are the number one uh, factor that you've got to be in tune with. So when we're trading, we're definitely not going to fight what the market is doing in the form of the big institutions piling in or piling out. We'll show you a little bit later the S&P chart that shows you just how they've been piling out until the last week. But fundamentals still matter, and the number one fundamental I look at is earnings surprises. We're just coming out of a period where we've had a lot of earnings reports. Some of them were very favorable. Um, some of them, you know, were really not. Um, you, you know, you saw big drops in some big down names like Caterpillar, IBM, uh, you know, even some of the names like Amazon, some of the FANG names that had been leading the market on the way up really got whacked after earnings this season. So that's got to be registered that if you're going to trade over the next few months until we get the next quarterly reports in January, you want to line yourself on the side of where the earnings surprise was. Now, what's an earnings surprise? An earnings surprise is how much the stock reacts to the actual news. So just because a stock has, quote, positive earnings above analyst expectations, that's not the definition of an earnings surprise. An earnings surprise means you're going to take advantage of the um, the the direction that the stock reacted after the news came out. So if the, if the news was quote unquote great, and then the stock dropped on that news, to me that's about as bearish of an earnings surprise as you can get. Because if the if they if they had wonderful news and the stock's being sold off, that's pretty dangerous and tells you it was very much expected. And now the downside is is ahead. So go with the earnings surprises quarter to quarter and never fight those. So that's why we track them and see which way did that stock gap up or down. And it doesn't matter it's just gapped up. It's got to finish up. So if a stock gaps up, you know, 5% after the news and then ends up down, you know, that's that's really, you know, a big reversal. So get in tune with where the net direction is after that earnings and that's what we're going to tell you the institutions, the 800-pound gorillas that are moving billions of dollars around, whereas you and I could be trading 10000 or even $10 million, and we'd be still uh, tiny chumps compared to that gorilla. But the bottom line is that you know we know we've got to get follow them. We don't want to get trampled by them and step in front of them. So it's very important. That's what everything I show, share with you today will be about how to get in tune with what where the institutions are going. Now, Another kind of a little more technical thing that I think is an important opportunity to allow you to beat the options pricing model is what are called fat tails in the distribution. Now, just like an earnings surprise, sometimes will be way ahead of or way below what the what the analysts were expecting. Here's a case where you know if we had if the stock market was quote unquote a normal distribution, which is not, that would imply that we have low probabilities of getting big moves up or down. Like for example, if you said we're looking at a three standard deviation move for the S&P on a given day. That would be about a three and a half percent drop on the downside. The implication is that that should only happen about 27 times over the last 100 years. Well, as you know, just looking at the market over the last couple of weeks, you've seen just incredible day-to-day -day volatility, and that it's, it's ha we've we've seen this actually happen. Uh, more than 100 times now since 1927. So instead of 27 times in 100 years, it's happened more than 100 times since 1927 and, and just about the last 90 years. So the point is, is that the 100-year flood is not happening once every 100 years. It's happening uh, every few years, if not less. And so, you know, the point is, is that when you go and look at individual stocks, you'll see those big tails of the distribution. And that's where you can take advantage of that the market and the options market doesn't price for that. And so you can buy relatively cheap options going out further saying, well, the market's saying, ah, oh, that's not likely to happen, and then get a big edge when it does happen. Now, we're going to share with you some indicators here, just some quick overviews. So when we look at some charts, you'll understand what we're talking about and looking at. The Commodity Channel Index sounds like it should only be used in the futures markets. It's called the CCI, developed by Donald Lambert. But I've shown it to be work really well in trending stocks on the upside and the downside, too. So we've got some important criteria that we use to guide us in how this CCI is showing us the momentum to the upside or the downside in a market. And what CCI does well compared to most other indicators, most other indicators are just based on a close-to-close -close action. If you look at a 200-day moving average, that's the last 200 days closes. 
if you look at the direction, what was the level that percent R gave you on a on a bar by bar basis? That's gonna it's gonna factor in the highs and lows, but it's only gonna look at the close to give you an actual percent R reading. CCI will tell us actually how much momentum is in a move to the upside or the downside, and that is very very valuable to me. So the more momentum in that move, the more opportunity that thing has to continue on after that initial buying surge or, or that big you know, start of that sell-off, as you've seen over the past month of October. The, the key philosophy I want to open your mind to is that the word overbought is not necessarily bad. Everybody's been trained that overbought means it's gone too far to the upside and it must reverse. But I've, I've made my best money in, in almost three decades of trading, trading overbought stocks to the upside and riding those trends as long as they stay in the proper overbought uh, structure. So if you've missed out on big moves, so I know a lot of you have missed big up moves and big down moves where you go back and say, wow, I can't believe it made even more progress, then bottom line is that you know this will get you thinking the right way. Again, it's about institutions that when, they, when, they're, when they're winning, just like when you and I are winning, it feels good. They keep riding it. They keep adding to a position that's working. If it's not working, they bail. So when things are starting to go against them, remember institutions typically – have to buy and 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 be totally invested on the bull side. Every once in a while, you've got some in, some hedge funds that have some bear positions too that can that can kind of move that bear side around. But the reality is, for most institutions, when they start to see something go down, they start losing that stock. They start bailing on it. And so when something goes really oversold, that can be really bad because it tells you that they're headed out of that stock. So we're going to get into overbought and oversold examples that can continue on in that trend. Now. ADX was developed by Wells Wilder, the, uh, the, the same guy that developed the RSI, Relative Strength Index. Uh, and, and Wells Wilder said, you know, that we want to look at the typical directional movement lines, which is a DMI plus for the positive directional movement. That essentially tells you how much new highs are you making in a typical look back period. DMI minus tells you about how many new lows you're making over a typical look back period, which would usually be like a few weeks at a time on a daily chart. But when you take DMI, you divide it by what Wilder called the true range, which factors in not just highs and lows on the given daily range bar, but also the gaps. Uh, he, he added that gap component in to get the, what he called the true range. That tells you how much real directional movement you're getting compared to the typical total movement in a stock. So it's like a percentile of how much we're trending or not. So when we go in and look at like a, a past example with Baidu, where we got a big score on Baidu, um, and, and again, this is also another indicator we're going to look at is the Williams percent R or percent range indicator. Again, overbought, something staying way overbought. We've got a bunch of examples to show you in Metastock here is where you see these power trends occur, I call them. And so we want something to stay in the top 20% of its percent R readings for a bull trend and then the, the bottom 20% for the oversold markets. And so when you catch that, the big trends bands will show you that. We've got it in Metastock now. I, I'm going to focus you today on just percent R, but when you catch that kind of a general zone where it's moving outside of that overbought threshold, that's where it can really explode to the upside. So we want to take advantage of that. Now, here's an example uh, of a chart in Metastock with Microsoft. And I, fortunately, I didn't have the big trends bands. I didn't have my plug in on this. I had to reinstall my software this morning. And uh, so I basically just pulled up what you could plot yourself just to give you a quick overview. Now, what we're going to look at here, first things first, when is ADX tradable? Now, when you see the start of 2018 back here, this is going back about a year on the daily time frame here um, in Metastock. And what you saw was you saw as we kicked off the year, several things happened. The percent R, Larry Williams' uh, overbought, oversold indicator, started to go overbought right here at the start of the year. And so when Microsoft, what that means essentially is that Microsoft's running up into the top of its range in the first week of 2018, first few days really, of 2018. As you remember, it turned out that the market soared most of January, right? And then gave back all of those gains in the first couple of weeks of February. We were actually able to be positive in Grand Slam for the month of February, even when everybody else had given back all their profits um, tracking the market. So the point here is that, okay, that's that's going to be our first um, kind of tell is that it's not the top of the range anymore if it keeps making higher highs and breaking out. You know the definition of an uptrend, right? It's higher highs and higher lows. So you can see that upward channel forming here as we continue to just steadily go uh, higher, higher lows, higher highs, right? Now, our, our 
premise here is that we want to see ADX having been low. The green line there is the ADX. And it gets pulled up when you start to see that the positive directional movement in blue, in this case on the upside trade, starts to go higher, meaning you're making higher highs. And then the negative directional movement in red starts to go lower, meaning you're making less new lows, right? Higher lows. So when that gap widens between those directional movement lines on the top panel, that's actually telling you that the, the, direct, the trend is starting to kick in and that's where ADX will start rising. And so when it's coming from a relatively low level and turning up uh, above that decline directional movement line in this case, combined with that we're going overbought on percent R and then CCI has got to be above plus 100 and then continuing up, you can see that pretty much started the year above plus 100 and then kept going up. Essentially, we're getting a breakout signal right here the first, like maybe the third day of, of 2018 here. And so from that perspective, all three of those legs of the stool are working together. If I only get two legs of the stool uh, working and one that's not there, that's going to be a wobbly thing to sit on, right? I don't take these trades unless all three of these uh, core indicators are telling me that it's all systems go. And so it's, it's a very picky system in that way. It's only going to allow you to be on board for that kind of sweet spot. Um, and obviously, like I showed you earlier, January was the month where we made um, essentially our, made our, our year, you know, up basically seven grand on a portfolio basis. If you started with 10 grand, you put 10% in per trade. We were hammering loads of bull trades and, and, and made about seven grand on our 10 grand just for that month of January. Then we're up over a thousand bucks in the month of February. So, so the point is, is that you know you can really um, pour it on quickly, and that's why I want to talk to you about the strategy today. Because when you go through the kind of corrective activity we've been through more recently, you can see it looks like ADX was going the other direction here the second week of October. From for this is from Mr. Softy, and the problem is, is that when that ADX was signaling, interestingly enough, it signaled before percent R got oversold and you can see percent R got oversold a couple of days later but didn't break down below that on a closing basis below that key low of October 11th and so the same thing with CCI it, it was it was percent R and CCI were coming in a little bit later and then they weren't confirming we were, if we had kept going down right here then we could have gotten the free fall and the bear trade signal in Microsoft and you see sure later it tries to break that a little bit but again look at how percent R is testing down at that short term low right there and it's not breaking that's just that's basically showing you that yes, Microsoft is consolidating, and yes, ADX has flattened out a little bit with this recent market bounce back. Uh, but essentially, it's saying you know what, you don't have the confirmation working here, so we're not we're not taking any bear trades in Microsoft. We're not taking bull trades either. And part of this is you know you know what we've we've been through a period where we've had less activity because we're not getting enough confirmations. But now that we're getting into this sweet spot, November, December, January, I truly believe you're going to see some pretty dramatic moves. And I, I think they're going to happen back to the upside ultimately. I think that, you know, that you're going to see that the positive seasonal bias, once we get through the midterms on Tuesday, there's a tremendous seasonal uh, opportunity with the, after the midterm elections to the upside historically. It's, it's basically a perfect record of riding the market back up over the next six months plus so essentially we're expecting that eventually we'll get those bull signals and potentially very quickly and we want to make sure you're positioned to take advantage of that at the same time i don't trade until i get all systems go so the reality is you know we're, we're going to be in a in a kind of a day-to-day -day holding pattern getting through the midterms and see how things start to reconfigure here but obviously we're betting that after this little downside attempt that the odds are that we could keep on uh start reversing and start coming back the other direction. We'll show you some examples of some more bull and bear trades there. Now, I mentioned Greeks, and most people would talk about, like, you want to see a high delta in your options uh, because you'll get a better bang for your buck. So if, it's, if your option goes up 80% of the of the $1 move in the stock, uh, you get 80% of that in the option, that would be an 80 delta. Most of what an at-the-money option, like if a stock's in 100, you buy a 100 call, that'd be about a 50 delta usually. Most of what we're going to do is in the stock's in 100, we might buy a 105 call, or betting on it making like a quick 10 point move or something like that, like a quick, you know, five, seven, ten percent move in the stock. And that can lead to very quick changes in your option value. Why? Because as you go from out of the money to in the money, something called gamma kicks in. You start to pick up more deltas more quickly 
when you're coming from an out of the money kind of a lower probability thing in the market size to a higher probability event as it goes up in that case above 100 so or above 105 say, say it goes 100 102 104 105 106 and now all of a sudden you're, you're picking up a ton of deltas as you go from say a 25 or 30 delta to a 50 delta to a 60 and 70 delta as it goes into money now theta still matters so we need to keep an eye on the change in value due to time decay and there's a couple of rules we have on that we don't mess with vega too much in terms of we don't mess with earnings situations we don't try to buy options right in front of earnings with this strategy because the implied volatility is too high and you'll see it implode after the event so we would rather kind of get the event behind us and trade in the direction of that earnings surprise when you look at where's the sweet spot to buy these options, it's your typical time decay or theta chart. And essentially what it tells you is that you really have a, a situation here in which you know that, yes, if you buy, say, four months out and you hold it for a month, you're not going to lose that much time value. The problem is when you buy that much time till expiration, you're going to have to pay up in the total premium. So you have to go way further out of the money if you go out that far. And you're probably going to have an earnings report priced in there as well because every 90 days you're going to see earnings for a given stock. So the reality is, is that, you know, we're going to have some issues there going that far out. If you go down below 90 days, you see the time component starts to expand. And you see at the 30-day window, you say, gee, that's where we're seeing the most total time erosion in that less than 30-day window. However, you're going to pay a lot less for those options on an absolute basis. So usually what we're looking at is somewhere in the neighborhood of about maybe 40 days window here. Uh, so maybe about a month and a half out before expiration, give or take, down to never holding it longer than about 14 days to expiration. So that 14-day mark, um, that's two weeks before the exp expiration. So this past Friday was a November 2nd, yesterday essentially, and, and that was two weeks before the November 16th monthly options any positions we would have held in November would have been closed out automatically, whether they were winners or losers. We don't want to hold them the last two weeks of that options life because you can see, especially if it's an at the money or out of the money situation, all that area under that curve is at risk for time erosion. Essentially, probably a, a third of the total um, time loss happens in that last couple of weeks. So, so what we would rather do is say, you know, maybe in, in a five-day window, say from 40 down to 35 days or from 30 down to 25 days, we'll give it five days and say, okay, yes, we're going to endure a little bit of time erosion, but we believe that the price movement when we catch these moves correctly is so dramatic that it far eclipses the little bit of time erosion to give yourself a chance to say, am I right or am I wrong? If I'm wrong and the stock hasn't moved or it's moved against me after five days, whether it's flat or slightly against me or a lot against me, I'm done with the trade after five trading days. What I've learned is it's better to put that time stop in than to actually put a price stop with a strategy initially. Because if I put a price stop in, um, uh, for example, I, I actually talked about a losing trade I just had here recently in GLD, gold. Um, I thought gold was going to go to the upside because the market was selling off, and, and I took a I took a gold uh, out of the money option and bought it. And at one point, that option it was it was wrong pretty much right from the start, didn't get going. And I, I would have stopped. Most people say, "Oh, stop it out of 50% loss if you're targeting a double or more." That trade would have been worse than a 50% loss at one point. And ended up taking a 29% loss. Now I'm not bragging about that. I'm just saying after the the five day rule, it was it was not quite profitable it's so, okay we've lost some time you know basically let's take that 29 percent loss and move on and i always tell people if you can't handle that you probably shouldn't be doing this strategy so this is definitely something where i say look trade smaller amounts as you get comfortable then you can start gradually building your portfolio exposure to this but that five-day rule really saves me from getting kind of stuck holding and hoping and allows me to focus on the next opportunity um for some reason, I've still got the same bobbin chart in here. We talked about that earlier, so I'm going to actually see what other charts I've got for you here in a sec. Uh, but basically, um, what I want to show you here is there's another graphic of gamma, and this is an extreme example. I wouldn't recommend trading options with just days left before expiration or in their final day of their life. But what you notice is, is that your gamma is ex extreme on the last day of the options life. If you were holding an at-the-money 50-strike call, we open the day, say you say you know you buy it on a friday morning it's going to expire that friday's close your gamma is going to be extreme if you buy an at the money option you can see in this case our gamma is about 43 you say look if it's 43 and we start with an at the money typical delta of 50 percent 
But that means that if we go from 50 to 51, at 51, your delta is going to go to what? It's going to go to total of 93, meaning that from 51 to 52, you're going to get 93% of that move from 51 to 52 in the option. So that you pick up, it becomes like stock-like, essentially, at moving almost point for point with the stock as you go in the money close to expiration. Now, of course, if it goes down to 49, you're on the wrong side of that point move. You're, what's, your, what's your delta going to go from? It's going to start at 50%. You lose 43 gammas. It's going to go to like 7%. Essentially, what that's telling you is that if you're a point out of the money on the last day of expiration, you've got about a 7% chance that it's going to finish in the money back at above 50. So that's another way to think of delta is the percentage chance that that option can finish in the money. So that's why an at-the-money option is about a coin flip, 50-50. Uh, and in the money, it's got a, a much higher probability of finishing in the money above 50, and out of the money has a lower probability, right? All things can, all things else being equal. What I think is interesting, though, is when you go out further in time, look at this 60 days line uh, in purple, just over 49 bucks is your peak gamma. So you're saying a slightly out of the money option is going to actually have more gamma as you add more time to it. So that's why you get that extra sort of bang for your buck going from out of the money to in the money, and that's why that timing is so critical, because when you can catch that quickly, you can really pick up deltas fast. Um, when you think about some of the names that we like to trade here, I mentioned Alibaba, Baidu, you see a lot of tech names, you know, you'll know, you see uh, Mr. Softy, Microsoft I mentioned earlier, was good, that was our, our best trade we ever had, was up like on the second half of our position after doubling the first half. Uh, late last year, we ended up making like 750 some odd percent on the second piece. On it, we were able to trade it into earnings and catch that gap once we had gotten the double on our first half. So I will take earnings risk only when I can sell all my initial risk capital out before the earnings event in this strategy. Um, so you know, like Starbucks had earnings on Friday. It was all uh, CEO was all over CNBC Friday morning. Um, but, you know, what's interesting to me is that you have names like, say, Visa and MasterCard. I think I've got a MasterCard chart in here on Metastock that I'll show you here in a little bit, where you start to say, okay, look, we take advantage of these kind of moves. We can really, um, you know, they don't have to be tech stocks to be very tradable. In fact, sometimes the MasterCard and Visas of the world will give you that same kind of movement that a tech stock would, but for a lot less premium. You, you can be a lot closer to the money because they're not priced in the same kind of volatility that, say, a Baidu or a Baba um, or Wind Resorts, the casino stock, NVIDIA, of course, very, very pricey options. You've really got to catch those right. Some of the priciest options are Tesla, but yet Tesla's had a nice up move, and it's you know been tradable to the upside here in the last couple of weeks post a, a good earnings report, finally. Finally made a profit. Um, here's Apple, actually, because I know everybody always asks me about Apple. And what's interesting to me is, like, we showed you earlier, like, how Microsoft wasn't looking so good. And, uh, Baba especially wasn't looking so good in, in August. Uh, but look at Apple. Apple, there's Apple's last earnings report. You know that Apple just had the earnings reaction here to the, the after the hours Thursday, and it was down. And you can see, so there's the, the down gap. And we'll talk about, is that bearish or not yet? But basically, the last time when it gapped up, it was just starting to go overbought on something like percent R. It's, it just pops back up into that overbought. And the day after the gap up, you see that it also had that ADX upturn. So it had been stuck for a while going nowhere, right? So the reason that ADX is low is when it's not trending, you don't want to trade, you don't want to buy options when ADX is headed down like that because you can just be stuck in a sideways consolidation. You don't want to trade the first little upturn in ADX either until it crosses above those directional movement lines. So we're willing to leave that first gap up at the start of August on the table and say, look, the next day, when it closes above that high, then you've got an all clear that Apple is good to go for a while. And you can see it ran from about 210 up to about 225 in the month of August. Notice what happened at ADX. It kept going up, up, up until where? The start of September. That's the sweet spot. After that, it's anybody's guess what's going to happen. You can see essentially, even though Apple made a marginal new high there in early October, would you have taken that trade there? No, it was just trying to go overbought on the percent R, but the CCI was not above its overbought threshold here, whereas it was start of August. And then um, and then ADX wasn't coming from a low enough level. It was still too high. It was not below both of those directional movement lines. So that, that told us, look, let's stay away from that and then, Glad we did. Now what? Now that it's gapped down, should you go bearish on Apple? 
Well, you see, it's just starting to go oversold at Friday's uh, close. And so therefore, from a percent R basis, it's got to close underneath that low on Friday. You can see also the CCI, we said minus 100 is our key threshold there. It's just starting to try to cross under that. The ADX is kind of edging up, so it looks, but of course, it's already started that profile even before the earnings, right? So the ADX kind of gave you an early clue that it was starting to give a little bit of a downtrending potential signal. But you can see, like, you had one of those back there in February where it looked like, okay, we have all systems potentially go. Did we take that bear trade? We didn't because it was above a long-term support line. Apple is still above its long-term support. So very low probability that I'm going to be buying Apple puts anytime soon. But if the market goes into total free fall for some reason, obviously Apple could be affected by that too. I don't really expect that to happen. But I'm just telling you like, okay, this is like setups is what I call those percent R and CCI signals on the Friday low and say, if we close below that, sure, then it could indeed start that pattern. Now, we don't follow every different stock. I showed you some of the stocks we followed earlier. It's it's about 40 to now almost 50 stocks that we consider to have been tailor-made both on the daily chart and we do some uh, short-term intraday chart analysis too to add some value. We also look at how the option chart is looking. You can get option charts in Metastock and this will show us the outlier trends, stuff that's really starting to get going uh, to the upside or the downside. And then we want that gamma boost. We want to catch it when it picks up deltas very quickly if going from slightly out of the money to at the money to in the money. So that's where you're going to get the chance to quickly turn an option over into a double plus when it when it has that quick surge in the stock over two or three days. It, it doesn't take long. Um, and so we're looking to catch that. The beauty of the strategy too is you don't have to sit and watch the markets all day every day. We, we drive it mainly off of the daily charts. And so then we'll send out alerts uh, before the market opens or right as the market opens to say, look, we like this one. We want to buy this option. We're going to, here's our stop. Here's our target. So you always know how we're thinking. Now with Grand Slam, what we do is every day we'll update you too when we're in a trade and say, where do we, where do we put our stop? Where do we put our target? What level should you get in? What level should you get out? So you can follow our research along that way. Every trade has to have a catalyst. Typically, it's price-based on the short term, and a lot of times also when it's falling through with the fundamental catalyst like earnings, then, then we're going to look for that breakout or breakdown after that earnings surprise. These are going to be out-of-the-money options, meaning that you can, if you just sat on them all the way to expiration and it never moves, you could be losing 100% of your investment. That's why that five-day time stop is so important, and also knowing that when we catch it right, we can hit home runs. When we catch it wrong, we can't lose more than we put into the trade. Typically, um, you know, we're going to keep our, our average loss quite a bit less than that. Now, that that's flat is still, you're still wrong after five days of the stock is flat. You say, hold on, the stock hasn't moved for me or against me. Guess what? You, you were expecting it to move for you. The stock was flat. You're wrong. Okay, I'm wrong. Uh, basically, better to acknowledge that and then admit it, and that'll help you to really be um, positioned to get rid of the dead wood and focus on the ones that are giving you those big, quick windfalls. And those are the ones that often will go much bigger than you or I would have ever expected. So have you ever noticed that when you're right, you're really right, right from the start. When you're wrong and you're wrong from the start, it's like you're swimming upstream, you're fighting it, you're, you're, you're kind of like, why won't this trade get going? And it's saying, look, let's not get into that type of a guessing game. Let's just follow the patterns. When it works, how we keep riding. When it's not working, how we blow it out and move on. So like we said, five to no more than 10% of your capital that you allocate for trading this type of a Grand Slam aggressive options trading strategy should go into any one trade. So we typically, like I said before, in our model portfolio, we'll start with a, a $10,000 model portfolio. That would mean a thousand bucks a trade. If you're starting with five grand, we would say don't put in more than 500 bucks. That's still, even when we buy them at a buck, that still gets you into say five contracts. So that way you can take advantage of selling two, you know, having two or three left over and, and following the same rules that we continue to advocate of how to gradually get out of your winning trades. We also give you weekly video training so you know exactly where we stand. Now, um, this was a, a case study with Baidu where you know, Baidu fit on all those criteria. Here's a case where ADX is already turning up. So that happened first. Percent R just started to break out right through that little resistance right in here. And then basically also uh, CCI was coming right on board as well. And you see, we got a double in about four days, a triple in about six days, and a, and a quadruple in the same sixth day. So sometimes that'll happen where we're getting out of that last piece up here, 
and you see then it backed off, then it ran up a little more, you go, ah, oh, I wish I hadn't sold it, it's up even more, and then a big gap down two days later. So this is the kind of thing that you can say, look, by taking that gradual money off the table, that reduces your risk, and you say, even if it keeps going, you don't sweat it, you focus on where we're headed from here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier with Mr. Softy, again, we would not be making this trade right now because even though ADX is bearish, um, you can see, so that's that's good, check on that, but you can see the percent R did not follow through again below that support, so that's no good, and CCI is the same way, no good, no follow through. So we would wait on that. Let's look at, how about looking at, uh, I don't know why I just put an Alibaba on me, I thought I had the S&P chart in here, I apologize. The S&P chart looks, you know, mildly negative, um, but you know bottom line is that it's it's still not it's it's still not anymore in a mode where it's bearish it's just it's just neutral it's not bullish either right now on the s p that's what i'm saying the on the broader market it's going to take a little shakedown before we get out of this mode here um so um, let's see if i can find that chart real quick because I, I hate not being able to show you that s p chart bear with me one second i think i've got a couple minutes left uh basically i'll, I'll do that in a second if i have a couple minutes i'll show you the s p chart here just pull it off my computer but like I said, when you when you looked at okay, we're up about 25 grand now through the end of October. We've given back a little ground since the end of May. And I told my subscribers, I said, look, don't get don't get stupid and start overcommitting your capital. We're probably going to have a summer uh, slowdown. We cut back on our you total. Setting your computer of, first if you haven't done that, and then see if it'll. Look. We cut back on our total uh, number of trades um, because we really wanted to focus on where the when the wind's at our back, we we pound the table with a lot of trades. When the when 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 the wind is not at our back, like in the summer months where usually there's a lot of chop, we'll cut the frequency down, and that reduced our drawdown. And so that's that's every trade's gonna every strategy's gonna have drawdowns. If you don't, if anybody tells you they never have drawdowns, uh, that that just wait, <laughs> they will. Um, and probably uh, not far after they tell you that. The reality is is you've got to manage your risk and stay with the trade. And most of the time, what we'll do is we'll typically have folks come in uh, to big trends either on a three month or a 12 month access 12 months is usually three grand three months is usually um, essentially a couple hundred bucks a month and, and what we've done for metastock users and attendees today is we've actually set up a pretty sweet deal for you when you go to that bigtrends.com slash gso link that we've had on some of these slides here at the bottom uh, that you'll see this page pop up here and you get to this um, basically half off special that we're giving we don't we don't typically offer this um, even to the big trends community. So you're getting something special here, which is try it for the next 30 days and you get it instead of 199 bucks, it'll cost you just 99 bucks to try it for 30 days and see that, you know, can we get um, the the doubles, the triples, the quadruples that'll basically help you to carry your portfolio. You know, the last one there, we got Alibaba puts uh, in October up 100%. Uh, so, so bottom line is that you know what you'll you'll do is you'll just hit the add to cart button. You'll put your key information in, and uh, and it's already taken off. So we already added that coupon at the savings. No no taxes unless you're in the state of Kentucky. No shipping. You just start getting emails, alerts, and you can also get text alerts from us if you want to. When you're in the green checkout box, just put in in the notes field what your text uh, number is down here in the customer note. So you put text me the alerts. To whatever your number is, et cetera, and then tell us what if you're on Verizon or AT&T or you name it, just put in whatever your service is because we put those on separate batch files and put your number in there. Click on all that, review the terms of service. Um, this is an automated renewal, so basically if you don't tell us in 30 days that it's not for you, we assume that you're good with it um, and you continue on to the next month for another 99 bucks 30 days from now. So if you're not good with it, we give you all the instructions down there about how to cancel if it's not for you. So you can try it for 30 days, cancel if it's in the, in the, in the first 29 days, it's not for you and move on. Okay, so that's something that'll help you dramatically. Now, I, I did promise you, okay, um, let's see, for some reason it just didn't save right on those, on those other charts. Let's see if I got one here, one more to look at here. Okay, here's, um, yeah, just for some reason, uh, it didn't capture off of my screen right from, um, I was had the S&P chart, didn't make it through, I apologize for that, we'll have to do that next time. But basically, just go to bigtrends.com slash GSO, and you'll be able to take advantage of this offer. You can also, on the top right, if you have any questions on it, 
two ways you can reach us. You can go to clientcare at bigtrends.com uh, as an email and send us a client care note to say, look, I'm, I'm interested, but I want some more information. I'd like to look at the full track record, et cetera, et cetera. Um, speaking of full track record, how about that? Why don't I just look at just a quick example of that? So like, like I said, if you're starting with a 10 grand portfolio, again, past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Start with 10 grand. We said, well, then you know what? You couldn't, if you bought Schlumberger in January, you couldn't buy more than 10 contracts. You could buy 10. You'd sell five of those 10 when it hit two the next day. Um, then you can see uh, a couple of days after that, it hit three. Then right behind that, it hit four. And then we're saying, thank you very much. From one to four, that's our final target. We're done. That one trade, we went from 10 grand to 11,700. So, you know, one a thousand dollar investment, uh, you had then 2,700 total back outs. So you made 1,700 bucks in gross profits off of that trade. So you can see that your $99 investment can easily be recouped many fold over by just one of those 100, 200, 300 percenters. Now, sure, there's going to be losses along the way. You saw it was kind of insane the amount of gains we had. And we told people, even with the February gains, like in Akamai, had another one of those. That that worked really well. Now, guess what? You know, more recently, like I said, there's been some give back. We've had some periods where we've lost three and four in a row. Okay, that can happen. You can also lose what you put into a trade. That happened to us a couple times. So that ten thousand up to fifteen thousand uh, again before commissions. So take your commissions out as well. But the point of this is that you know, hey, even if it's even if it's the, in a tough little environment, which I think it's about to get really really good. In this November, December, January seasonality, as well as into um, uh, April, really, on the best six months of the year to be in stocks. Take advantage of that, but also make know that we're going to not be just firing out trades willy nilly. We're only going to fire trades when all of those things uh, come together. So you can see down below all the benefits you get with the trading videos and so much more um, with this and all the many examples of, of 100, 200, 300 percent that we've made over time. Typically about six trades a month, um, but maybe maybe even sometimes a bit more. But basically, we would rather say, look, instead of over committing, let's under commit and say, look, over that next 30 days, you'll get at least six from us. And if, if it's a slow period for any reason, then basically know that I'm committed to making sure you get at least six uh, for trying us out over this uh, next uh, month or so. So basically, if you have any questions, call us 800 Big Trends toll free or drop us an email to clientcare at bigtrends.com. Go to bigtrends.com slash GSO to take advantage of this. I wanted to leave a few minutes for Jeff to come back in and tell you also about how you can take advantage of our Big Trends toolkit. Uh, for Metastock. Jeff and I worked directly on this, as he said, many years ago, and we've had uh, multiple uh, version upgrades, so you can take advantage of the latest and greatest stuff that we've added into the Big Trends Toolkit for Metastock. So I'm going to hand it back over to Jeff right now and say, Jeff, thank you for including me. It's always a pleasure to be with you and, and all the Metastock community uh, for all the great things that we've been able to do. I look forward to many great things looking ahead into 2019 and beyond, and happy holidays right. to you and yours. All right. Thanks, Price. Um, again, great job. Uh, appreciate your coming in and spending an hour with us. So I do want to talk a little bit about um, the work that we did with uh, the Price Heedley Toolkit. And um, uh, basically, uh, when we started working together, uh, I said it was about a dec decade ago, we actually went into one of, uh, one of the very popular books. I believe it was called finding bid trends in stocks and options, if I remember right. And what we did was we created what we call a meta stock add-on to kind of uh, take advantage of all of his indicators and all of the research that he had done at that point for something like 15 years. And what we were able to do is to actually create an add-on that was extremely popular. It's been so popular that we just released the third version of it um, earlier this year. And it's going to have all of the indicators that he uses. Again, his core concept is be willing to step over the small opportunities and focus on the best opportunities that are available and that exist in the market. So we actually put together all of his indicators, all of his methods. Uh, there's about... Uh, 14 or so core methods that are in there. We use as acceleration bands and all that kind of stuff. I absolutely do not have time to show you this uh, all the way through, but I want to show you one of the systems that's uh, been included in the newest version of BitTrend Toolkit, the version 3.0. With this particular system, what we did was we combined 10 or so of uh, Price's favorite indicators and we put together kind of a system around a combination of all of his different systems. It's exclusive to Metastock. It's not available anywhere else. And I want to kind of show you exactly how that works uh, very quickly. We don't have a lot of time. 
which isn't unusual, but um, I do, I did run a scan a little bit this morning. Uh, this is one of the stocks that came up. I'll show you how that scan gets run. You can run it against in any instrument that you want. I uh, actually ran it against all of the optionable stocks that are above five bucks and that have a minimum average volume of about, uh, I think it's 500,000 shares. So I made a list of that. I scanned against that list. And uh, this is an example that came up today. Uh, so you'll see right here, uh, just to point out on the chart right here, we had a bit of a setup. Um, the next day it, it actually opened up and gave us a buy signal and it gave us an exit. The reason it came up on the scan this morning is it actually gave us a buy today. So very, very quickly, if you're not familiar with Metastock, that's okay. We'll be talking about it quite a bit today. But if I open up a commentary window here, I can actually kind of give you an idea of what goes into this system very, very quickly. So right now what we've got, oh, and I'm not sharing my screen. so. Uh, thank you for uh, saying that. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Maybe, let me make the presenter back to me, okay? Drink a little bit more coffee to show my screen here, okay? All right, you should be able to see a uh, screen <laughs> this time. This time for sure, right? So, and uh, it's just because we have a little bit of time. I'm trying to kind of rush through so we don't get a lot of, uh, take a lot of time uh, away from Vince, who does a great job as well. You should be able to see the screen now. So I ran this on a scan today. Um, what we're getting here is the, the combination of those indicators that, and you'll see that we have a score of 90. So out of this, uh, out of the indicators that we're looking at, it's giving us a little bit of a diamond here on the very far right edge of the screen. Okay, just ran that scan this morning. You'll notice there's a little bit of a diamond right under the chart. And uh, what we're looking at today, just to show this to you real quickly, is um, we're looking for uh, a setup on Monday if, to confirm by giving us a, a high above 28.55. If that happens, we'll get a buy signal or a confirmed entry signal on this particular chart. Okay, I'm gonna kind of jump back to this particular trade right here that happened earlier on this chart. Again, I just ran a little bit of a scan. Um, if we look at this, this triggered back in about April 26. The next day we triggered into a buy signal. So this confirmed an entry by going above the high. And one of the things that this will do for you uh, is if we look through this, it'll tell you that you're currently in a long trade. Once it, the, the conditions are kind of met, it'll actually give you a stop price. So once it's kind of gone up, has established a, a bit of a support level, it's gonna start to give you a, a stop price. So if we go to this very next day, you'll see there's no stop price yet, but right now what it's doing is the current stop is 21.45. So as soon as the conditions price outline for that, give you that stop price, it'll go ahead and exit. I'm looking at the time, I've got to hurry. So right here, we've got a little bit of a buy exit. It just signals that on the chart again. This is just a scan you can run with our Explorer. So, uh, and I'll show you the scanning a little bit later today. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of time. I'm pretty sure Vince is gonna show it to you as well. So, uh, because I wasn't showing my screen before, here's the methods that are in there. This is just a big trend score. One of the things I'd like to point out is uh, it has all of the indicators from all of the work that he's done. It's a great companion to his book. I'd recommend you pick that up so that you can kind of see everything and kind of get a really good understanding of everything. But this is just one of the methods in, Meta, in the Metastock program. And here's another bit of an example on the chart. Here's what the scan results look like um, when you come up by. It's just going to show you what that score is. In this case, it's 100. All 10 of the indicators match up. Um, this particular add-on has a full implementation into Metastock. So it's got an expert advisor, a scanner, a systems tester. You can go back and say, okay, well, how, how do the different methods perform on all of my optional stocks? Which ones does it work best on? It's a very, very full implementation. And we're offering it, and you can see I'm just skipping ahead a little bit here, but we're offering it uh, at just $49 a month or $4.95 per year. Okay, what we're gonna do as a summit special for you is if you pay for a month of the uh, Big Trend Toolkit, we'll give you two months free with your uh, with that free month. So you pay, uh, or with that first month. So you pay $49, you get it for three full months. Um, if you have more questions, uh, wanna get the demo video, give us a call. The number here is 800-882-3040, or you can visit online at metastock.com 
slash sales chat. Robert, you asked a really good question. I'm going to let Bobby answer it, uh, but very, very quickly, it doesn't include Metastock. This is an add-on to Metastock, and so you can actually, uh, uh, but you can actually get a trial today. Today, we're going to be focusing on uh, quite a number of the different add-ons that we've created. Uh, Price, uh, up next is Vince Vora, who has an add-on for Metastock. Uh, Barry Burns uh, is after that, and uh, Chuck Hughes, finally. Uh, and we have created add-ons for all of these market experts. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to offer a really incredible toolbox offer today. So if you buy off five of the add-ons, normally that would cost you $29.42. We're going uh, include, uh, we're going to basically include two years of Stocks and Commodities magazine access, three months access to Metastock real-time, three months access to our Metastock Zenith service, which gives you some of the best news and market coverage in the industry. We're going to do a boot camp uh, and uh, an Unleash of Power of Metastock. All this would normally cost you $4,138, but with the Summit special pricing, you can get everything uh, $1,796. So uh, give us a call, 800-882-3040, or visit us at metastock.com slash sales chat. And you can tell I'm in a little bit of a rush, but we, we have a lot of time today. We're going to go through more of it as we go. I do want to say thank you to Stocks and Commodities Magazine for sponsoring today's event. It's a great magazine. Earlier today, I actually uh, put in a link where you can claim a free trial offer. Uh, of course, if you buy anything from the summit from us today, we're going to give you at least six months. And if you spend more than 300 bucks, we're going to give you two years of subscription to the Stocks and Commodities as part of that purchase. So one, uh, Stocks and Commodities is an awesome magazine. They've been doing it forever. It's one of those magazines that I uh, get in the mailbox every year. And um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about...